Eight months ago marks the commencement of our narrative, with Sakura Makoto as the protagonist, facing expulsion from school. The entire student body cast a gaze upon him, bewildered by the circumstances surrounding his departure. Unbeknownst to many, rumors had proliferated throughout the school, accusing Sakura Makoto of assaulting classmates a mere two weeks into his enrollment. Despite the disapproving whispers and stares, Sakura Makoto remained indifferent to the opinions circulating about him, choosing instead to disregard the ongoing speculation. Little did the student body know, Sakura Makoto had intervened to halt an instance of bull, ultimately resulting in a physical altercation. Regrettably, he found himself on the receiving end of the aggression, battered and bruised. Due to the bully being none other than the offspring of the student council president, Sakura Makoto was left with no alternative but to endure expulsion. As he walked away from the institution, a voice called out to him, revealing the instigator of his misfortune to be the very son of the student council president. In a display of contempt, the expelled student taunted Sakura Makoto for his forced departure. Ignoring the provocations, Sakura Makoto continued on his path, inciting further ire from his assailant, who resorted to a cowardly act of kicking him from behind. The assailant harbored deep resentment towards Sakura Makoto, offended that someone would dare to challenge him despite his privileged position as the president council's son. Subsequently, the antagonist continued his torment by dousing Sakura Makoto with water, taunting him for supposedly choosing the wrong person after attempting to play the role of a justice-seeking hero. As time progressed, Sakura Makoto managed to make his way home, only to be met with shock and panic from his parents upon learning of his expulsion. In their state of concern, they promptly reached out to the school to ascertain the reasons behind their son's abrupt dismissal. However, Sakura Makoto, seemingly unfazed by the turmoil he had caused, remained indifferent to his parents' distress. Leaving them to grapple with their anxiety, he retreated from the room without a second thought. His father, brimming with anger, warned him that their predicament was far from over. In response, Makoto, fueled by a mix of fury and guilt, vehemently declared that everything was already concluded. Overwhelmed by a sense of culpability, feeling unjustly blamed despite his efforts to protect someone, he swiftly departed from the room, leaving his parents to confront the repercussions of his actions. Seeking solace, Makoto ventured into the city, aiming to distance himself from the tumultuous events that had unfolded. Harboring resentment towards his parents due to their strained social relationship, Sakura Makoto found solace in private conversations with himself. While engrossed in his thoughts, he became aware of a construction site that had seemingly materialized unnoticed in the vicinity. To his surprise, it wasn't just one but two additional sites had emerged nearby. Suddenly, the ground beneath him trembled, and an earthquake ensued, prompting Makoto to brace himself against the intensifying force. As the seismic activity grew more pronounced, Makoto, in a state of alarm, turned to see a building he hadn't noticed before. This structure resembled the recently sprung up constructions, and upon closer inspection, he discerned a staircase leading downwards. Quickly consulting his phone for information, Makoto discovered that these enigmatic buildings were not exclusive to Aomori, but had manifested globally. What intrigued him further was the realization that these structures were, in fact, dungeons. Eager for a change in his life and buoyed by the prospect of newfound joy and freedom, Makoto decided to enter one of these mysterious dungeons. Word spread quickly about the seismic events caused by the sudden appearance of these dungeons, drawing the attention of people worldwide. As individuals gathered to learn more about the earthquakes and the mysterious dungeons, Makoto embarked on a journey that held the promise of transforming his life. Reports surfaced of individuals attempting to enter the dungeon being attacked by peculiar creatures, resulting in fatal consequences. This news instilled anxiety in Makoto's parents, who were deeply concerned about the inherent dangers within the dungeon. Despite the evident peril, Makoto remained resolute in his decision to enter. Upon crossing the threshold, Makoto was met with a breathtaking spectacle. Unexpectedly, a voice resonated within the dungeon, notifying him that the level system had been activated. Startled, Makoto questioned the identity behind the voice and the significance of the level system. In response, the system elucidated that upon uttering the command status open, a display featuring his status, inventory, and magical items would manifest. It dawned on Makoto that this dungeon operated like a game. Driven by curiosity, and the allure of this newfound reality, Makoto uttered the command. Instantaneously, a window materialized before him, revealing a myriad of information that left him in a state of shock. The system's display revealed Makoto's initial status, level 8, health points at 8, mana points at 10, with an attack power of 2, defend points at 3, and a speed rating of 3. Disappointment washed over him as he perceived his seemingly modest attributes. The system, however, sternly warned him that if his health points were to reach zero, the consequence would be fatal. 
In his quest for understanding, Makoto inquired about skills. The system clarified that, upon reaching specific level, he would either acquire a random skill or witness an augmentation in the level of an existing skill. This revelation piqued Makoto's curiosity, leading him to question the potential for infinite level ups. The system responded by explaining that it possessed the capability to assist him in surpassing the conventional level limits, offering the prospect of unprecedented growth. Abruptly, a level 1 slime leaped towards Makoto. Providentially, this presented the opportune moment for him to test out his magic skill. The system instructed him to point his hand at the monster and vocalize the skill name. Following the directive, Makoto casted a level 1 fire magic spell, conjuring a fiery ball that hurtled toward the slime. He observed with satisfaction as the burning flames engulfed the creature, successfully eliminating it. The system promptly notified him of an effortless level increase by one, sparking Makoto's fascination with the potential of his newfound skills. Continuing his expedition, Makoto found himself immersed in the dungeon's tutorial until it finally concluded. The system then prompted him to choose a name for himself within the dungeon, leading to an ironic decision. He adopted the moniker Dropping Out Chan. In the midst of conversation, a figure emerged behind him, perplexing Makoto with the system's mention of giving good luck. Upon turning around, he was met with the imposing presence of a level 20 Minotaur. Startled, Makoto narrowly evaded a powerful slam from the Minotaur's hand, utilizing his agility. Seizing the opportunity while suspended midair, he began casting another spell to counter the formidable foe. Attempting to use a level 1 fire magic against the approaching Minotaur, Makoto was perplexed when the spell failed to materialize. As the Minotaur closed in, his confusion grew, prompting him to hastily open his status window. To his dismay, he discovered he only had 5 health points and 0 mana, rendering him incapable of casting the fire magic. Recalling his earlier use of the skill during the tutorial, Makoto quickly realized that his actions had consequences. With the Minotaur drawing near and his magical abilities temporarily inaccessible, Makoto made a strategic decision to retreat. He sprinted through the dungeon, exuding confidence despite the looming threat. Seeking a solution, he eventually stumbled upon a familiar adversary, a slime. Without hesitation, Makoto dispatched the slime, gaining valuable experience and leveling up by 3, now at level 5. It dawned on him that he possessed a unique skill. Defeating monsters granted him experience points multiplied by a thousand. Empowered by this revelation, Makoto returned to face the Minotaur with newfound confidence. The following day, his anxious parents awaited his return, with his mother suddenly rushing towards them, revealing that Makoto had sent a message. Alarmed, his father inquired about Makoto's whereabouts. Surprised to learn that Makoto was now inside the dungeon, his parents were left bewildered. Meanwhile, Makoto continued his arduous battle against the Minotaur, struggling despite his newfound level 15 status. Yet, his unique skill allowed him to accumulate a substantial amount of experience, bolstering his strength. Remaining within the dungeon for 12 hours, Makoto dedicated time to studying essential aspects of his surroundings. He discerned that despite the destruction of walls and floors, everything would eventually revert to normal within a short period. Additionally, the monsters he defeated would undergo revival after a certain duration. Empowered by this knowledge, dropping out Chan, now a formidable force, successfully landed blows on the Minotaur. Contemplating his next move, Makoto considered reaching out to his mother but hesitated, uncertain whether to continue his venture within the dungeon. Positioned outside the immediate danger zone, he recognized that the Minotaur couldn't approach him. Realizing that the monsters within the dungeon were confined to its boundaries, he resolved to continue combating them, leveraging his newfound strength. Despite using the safe zone to regain his strength, Makoto found himself cornered, forced into a precarious situation. Running on low health points and zero mana, he struggled to comprehend his predicament. Unable to level up, his attacks proved futile, and fatigue, coupled with hunger, began to take its toll. In this desperate state, an idea struck him. With renewed determination, Makoto seized the opportunity as the monsters revived at the perfect moment. He flawlessly eliminated a swarm of bat monsters, leveraging his unique skill to accumulate experience points exponentially. As his level soared to 25, a surge of satisfaction overcame him, instilling the courage to confront the Minotaur head-on. In an intense battle, Makoto managed to decapitate the Minotaur, reaping a substantial amount of experience that catapulted his level to 43. This pivotal moment brought a realization. The life he sought, one of freedom and liberation from parental constraints, seemed to manifest within the confines of the dungeon. Two weeks later, a widespread rally unfolded as numerous people demanded the opening of the dungeon. However, the higher-ups resisted the clamor due to the significant number of casualties reported within these enigmatic structures. 
A gathering of high-ranking individuals convened in a room to address the pressing matter, marking a crucial United Nations meeting focused on whether to open the dungeon or maintain its closure. A Senate officer, eager to advocate for the dungeon's open, proposed the utilization of items obtained within for technological revolution. He believed these items could serve as invaluable resources. However, a dissenting voice emerged, contending that this wasn't a sufficient reason to unseal the dungeon. Prompted by the disagreement, the Senate officers sought more information. It was revealed that inside the dungeons, not only were conventional weapons rendered ineffective, but modern scientific equipment relying on telecommunication also proved unusable. The complexities of the dungeon's impact on technology and weaponry raised concerns, complicating the decision-making process regarding whether to open its doors to the public. Following the discussions, the Senate officer asserted that what they needed was not an army but individuals with high level. To maximize the potential benefits of the dungeon, he proposed utilizing citizens to explore its depths. The idea was for these citizens, referred to as the players, to navigate the dungeon, collect valuable items, and upon exiting, sell them to fuel a modern revolutionary movement. Eight months later, the Amori province initiated the establishment of recommended levels for each dungeon, aiming to provide a sense of freedom and safety for those venturing into the dungeons. However, challenges arose within the dungeons, particularly with the encounter of a minotaur monster. Its unknown level perplexed and disoriented some players, casting doubt on whether the monster was suitable for their current skill and experience level. The uncertainty surrounding recommended levels and the formidable foes within the dungeons added an additional layer of complexity to the unfolding narrative. Within the dungeon, three siblings, Kudo Aya, age 21 with level 34, Kudo Yui, age 21 with level 32, and their frontliner, Kudo Hiro, age 34 with level 37, engaged in a fierce battle. Despite their formidable levels, Kudo Hiro sensed the overwhelming power of the Minotaur and realized that they were ill-prepared for such a confrontation. In a decisive move, he urged his sisters to flee, prioritizing their safety over the uncertain outcome of the battle. Aya, worried for her brother, hesitated, but Hiro insisted that they escape as quickly as possible. As the siblings began to retreat, Hiro faced the powerful Minotaur alone determined to buy them time. Unfortunately, the Minotaur proved to be too formidable for Hiro to handle, overpowering him and forcing him to the ground. Terrified and unable to mount a counterattack, Hiro found himself at the mercy of the menacing creature. As Hiro lay on the dungeon floor, fear and desperation setting in, he experienced a sudden flashback. Memories flooded back, taking him to a moment on a train, scrolling through his phone and stumbling upon information about entering the dungeon. The circumstances leading him to this point played out in his mind, creating a poignant contrast between the present danger and the seemingly innocent decision to enter the dungeon. Realizing the dire situation, Hiro implored his sisters to participate in the fight, prompting self-reflection on his part for potentially being selfish. Aya and Yui rushed to aid him, but their efforts were seemingly in vain, as the powerful Minotaur launched a devastating attack. However, just as the creature was about to strike, a sudden blur moved at lightning speed to intercept the attack and save Hiro. To their astonishment, a kid had dashed in, delivering a powerful blow that instantly dispatched the Minotaur. Shocked and grateful, Hiro looked upon their unexpected savior. It turned out to be Makoto, who had heard their cries for help and rushed to their aid. Expressing their gratitude, the siblings were left perplexed by Makoto's ability to defeat the formidable Minotaur with a single strike. Curiosity getting the better of them, Hiro inquired about Makoto's level. To their utter shock, Makoto revealed that he had reached level 10,000, leaving Aya, Yui, and Hiro in awe. The realization dawned on them that Makoto, the seemingly ordinary person they encountered in the dungeon, was, in fact, the true monster within its depths. Thank you for watching. If you like this story please comment next part. I hope you like our today's story. See you next time goodbye.